Lion Gaming Crew, and in this Diablo 3 build guide, we're going to be taking a look at a brand new set for the Demon Hunter, available now in both softcore and hardcore, so no matter what mode you play on, on PlayStation Man, we got you. So big special shout out to each and every single member of the Discord community, man. I couldn't do this without my team, my uh, gear support roles, my supporter roles, my admin, you know, all of you guys, man. That big, 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 big shout out to you. And again, shout out to each and every single one of my subscribers, man. You guys are really making my dream become a reality. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into this build guide, man. So for our main weapon right here, we're picking up Yang's recurve. Um, normally, we would rock the Dawn bow because we're going to be utilizing rapid fire for this build. But Yang's Recurve has a special bonus on there where it reduces all resource costs by a flat 50%, which is very, very nice, and that'll allow us to hit some crazy resource cost reduction numbers, which I'll show right at the end. So yeah, it's pretty good. It's got 1,665,262.5 damage per second. It is infused with the Gem of Ease, so you're going to get 8,000 experience per kill. And it also has the multi-shot bonus on there, but we're not going to be utilizing that in this build, but you can if you so choose. And this is a level 1 Primal Ancient Legendary Bow. For the gloves right here, this is the first piece of the Legacy of Dreams set. It's actually a new uh, glove for the uh, channel here. It is the Mage Fist gloves. Very, very good indeed. It has a lot of different affixes on there though, but um, each and every single one of them is crucial, so I'm not really going to name them all. But this also buffs our fire skills, and that means our fire skills deal 20% increased damage, which is really nice. Reduces cooldown of all skills set for 19%. Resource cost reduction coming in at 10. Chance to deal 24% area damage on hit. 15% damage to elite enemies. This has a 9% rapid fire critical hit chance and a 60% rapid fire damage for the demon hunter only. And this is a level 1 primal ancient legendary gloves. Very, very nice. For the shoulders right here, Mantle of Channeling, I'm not really going to list off these uh, affixes again, only the ones that have changed. So on this one, you're going to get 38,625 life from health potions slash globes, and killing an elite pack increases move speed by 30% for 7 seconds. You guys all know what the Mantle of Channeling does, it basically just increases your damage and gives you reduced damage. The uh, cooldown and resource cost reduction are both the same, as well as the area damage and bonus damage to the enemies. This one only has the 9% rapid fire critical hit chance on there, and it is a level 1 primal ancient legendary shoulders. For the chest, we're picking up the Cinder Coat, the third piece of the Legacy of Dream set. Again, hitting all major categories for the affixes. This one has 17,376 life after each kill. And also has the bonus killing an elite pack increases move speed by 30% for 7 seconds. And it reduces the resource cost of fire skills by 30%. Cooldown is again set for 19. Resource cost reduction coming in at flat 10. And again that 24% chance to deal area damage. And that 15% damage to elite enemies. This also has that 9% rapid fire critical hit chance. And this is a level 1 primal ancient legendary chest armor. For the helm right here, we're picking up the Visage of Goons. This is socketed with two diamonds to give us extra resource cost reduction, and it is infused with the Red Soul Shard, so it's a pretty good helm, man. It ignores durability loss. It's got crazy critical hit damage coming in at 400%, 40% critical hit chance, which is just insane on just a helm. You know, it's crazy. You also get 1,000 to all stats. That same bonus to increase your move speed by 30% for 7 seconds. And uh, this also gives us Vengeance, gains the effect of the Dark Heart Rune, and you also periodically struggle for control, unleashing a devastating ring of fire that inflicts 20,000% weapon damage to enemies it passes through. Cooldown of all skills is set for 49.8% on this piece of gear. Resource cost reduction coming in at 27.1. Again, that 24% chance to deal area damage on hit, and the opponent bonus 15% damage to the enemies. And you also get that 9% rapid fire critical hit chance again, which is very, very nice. And this is a level 1 primal ancient legendary helm. Moving on to the amulet right here. This is the uh, first piece that is codenamed Vanguard. That is the name for this set. Not too much to talk about on here. Uh, 14,000 dex is pretty nice. The 900% damage is really great. 90% life is pretty cool. Um, you also get 400% damage to all demon hunter skills. And uh, yeah, man, it, this one also has the... Uh, 
bonus from the Dawn Bow, which says rapid fire increasingly deals 100% increased damage while channeling, stacks up to 30 times. That's why we're utilizing the Yang's recurve to pick up that 50% resource cost reduction. And we just affixed the uh, Dawn Bow bonus onto the amulet. And this also reduces the cooldown of Vengeance by 65%. That is from the Fortress Ballista. And then we also get the Grenadier passive. So it really hits everything. And that's why we're able to use the Sin Seekers like, like. and the, uh, the, the Yang's Recurve to get some crazy, crazy resource cost reduction and cooldown. So cooldown for this piece of gear is set for 71.7%. Resource cost reduction coming in at 27.1%, chance to deal 144% area damage on hit, which is so nice because that can go up to 900%, uh, I believe. You also get a 45% damage to elite enemies and that capped 25% movement speed bonus, which is so, so, so nice. The next piece of gear right here, uh, the Warshin Arm Guards. You guys have all seen these before. It's every time you destroy a wreckable object, you gain a short burst of speed. This one has a different affix for 17,376 life after each kill, which is a little bit different from life after each hit because, you know, you when, when you're one-shotting enemies, you're not really capitalizing off of that bonus. So I'm starting to switch it out to life after each kill so that way you can always stay, you know, fully healed and ready to rock. Cooldown for this is set for 19%. Resource cost reduction coming in at a flat 10. Again, those two bonuses for area damage and damage to elite enemies. And this also gives you 60% rapid fire damage. Very, very nice. Moving on to the offhand right here. We're actually going to take a look at the Liana's wings right here. This is one of the cube powers that we're going to be sending out with this set. Um, we're trying to include all of the cube powers pulled from the maxroll.gg guides for these builds. But uh, sometimes I like to use different ones, so I'll just send out the ones that I like to use and the ones from maxroll.gg if we have them. So the Sin Seekers right here, man, pretty good. It has rapid fire, no longer has a channel cost, which is just great. Uh, cooldown of all skills coming in at 19, again 10% resource, 24 area damage, 15 damage to elite enemies, and 60% rapid fire damage. Very, very nice. First ring right here, this is going to be the Immortal Ring. Not too many uh, affixes on here though, because they all really stack, so you're getting like 6,000 dex, which is super crazy, 700% damage to all Demon Hunter skills, gold health pickup radius is increased by 70 yards, which is just absolutely insane, man. And this has the Molten Wildebeest Gizzard in there, so you're going to regenerate 160,000 life per second. Cooldown of all skills is really high on this one, 61.2%. Resource cost reduction 27.1, 144% area damage on hit, and a 45% damage to the enemies. And the ring on the left is going to be the cube power ring. It just gives you uh, reduced damage for 8 seconds after casting, you know, shatter power, smoke screen, a vault, which is great because we're using all three of those. The second ring right here is the 1 billion physical scale damage ring. This one has a little bit higher of damage to all demon hunter skills coming at 800%. It has some life per hit on there because I just want to get all categories hit. 1,200% damage, which is just crazy. This one also ignores durability loss. Uh, not too much else on here. Cooldown of all skills, 65.1%. Resource cost reduction, 56.9. Again, that 144% area damage on hit, which is just crazy. And again, that 45% damage to the enemies. Very, very nice. For the boots, the illusionary boots, these just let you move unhindered through enemies, which is really, really great um, when you're like trying to push leaderboards and stuff like that. This one has 17,376 life after each kill. Cooldown is a little bit higher, 27.1%, resource 10, 48% area damage, 15% damage to elites, and 9% rapid fire critical hit chance. Very nice for some level 1 primal ancient legendary boots, huh? So the pants right here, these are the Blackthorns Battle Gear pants right here, codenamed Vanguard. Again, really hitting everything. You're getting 38,625 life from health, potion slash globes, which is very great. And uh, cooldown is the same, resource is the same, area damage and damage to elite is the same. And you're getting a 60% rapid fire damage, which is very nice. And this is a level 1 Primal Ancient set pants. And you guys don't have to worry. As long as you're not utilizing a set bonus, you can use set pieces. As long as you don't have the set bonus, you will still be able to take advantage of the Legacy of Dreams gem. The last piece of gear right here is the Hellcat Waste Guard. This just buffs your grenades, which is, you know, great because we're going to be using those too. 38,625 life from potions, you know, and globes, which is great. 
100% damage to all Demon Hunter skills is just really, really nice. Same, All the same bonuses as shown on the pants right there. Level 1, Primal Ancient Legendary Belts. For these skills right here, this is a very good skill setup. I'm having a lot of fun with this, so I would recommend you guys start with this one and then experiment a little to try to really find the playstyle that you like because the Legacy of Dreams offers a very unique uh, set of playstyle. You can really choose any combination of skills um, that you want, and that's why I like these Legacy of Dreams builds. So for X ability, we're picking up in the Devices skill tree, Vengeance with the Rune Side Cannons. For R2, Main Damage Dealing Attack, it is going to be Rapid Fire with the Rune Fire Support. Very, very nice. For the Defensive skill tree, we want to put up, pick up Shadow Power with the Rune Shadow Glide to get in increased move speed. Same deal here with the uh, Triangle ability and the Defensive skill tree again. Smoke Screen with the Rune Displacement just to get, you know, crazy, crazy move speed. This one right here, you guys can switch out. Uh, I really like Phantom Knives. I've been having a lot of fun with it with the Rune Assassin Knives. It's just a good uh, close quarters combat option. You know, it's really, really good for taking out big packs of enemies. And finally, for that mobility skill and the hunting skill tree, you want to pick up Vault with your Rune Acrobatics, but you really can put any Rune on there that you want. I just like Acrobatics. Passive number one is Tactical Advantage. Passive number two, Hot Pursuit. Passive number three, Ballistics. And passive number four, Ambush. And we already have the Grenadier passive built into the amulet, so you guys don't have to equip that one. Cube powers being Liana's wings, so that way whenever we cast our square ability, we're also going to cast our triangle ability, which is very, very nice. Nem bracers, you don't have to use these if you're using a follower, but we're not using a follower for this video, so we're picking the Nem bracers up. And finally, the elusive ring, shown earlier just to get reduced damage for 8 seconds. So with that all aside, oh quickly, you know, let's touch on Paragon really quick. Everything into Vitality, guys, you don't need to touch anything else. Everything else is already taken care of, I promise. For the offensive skill tree, uh, cooldown reduction, just to see if you can get it a little bit higher. It's very, very good already, but, you know, it, it can always get higher, though. You know, until it's at 100%, I'm going to recommend that you put points into there. Uh, resist all, definitely. Armor, yeah, for sure. Um, life and life regen is pretty good, but, you know, it could use it a little bit more. Utilities, uh, you don't need anything in area damage. That's already way, way taken care of. I would say life per hit and gold pickup radius just to get it to 80 yards. So let's go ahead and show the final numbers before we pop into this rift. Not too high on the damage, but I'm going to show you guys why lower damage is actually better um, in some cases than having over 1 trillion. So this is a 388 billion, 119 million, 658,496 damage. Uh, 103,000 armor, which is great. It's actually higher than our dexterity, which just means more survivability, you know. Uh, damage increased by dex, 76,000%. Damage to elites, 335%. Attack speed increased. We actually got it to show a number, and it's 35%, which is great. Critical hit chance capped at 75. Critical hit damage capped at 900. Area damage, 696. Holy hell. Uh, cooldown reduction, 99.85%. It's just such a beautiful number. Anything above 99.50% uh, to me is just, it's perfect. It's, it's perfect, man. Rapid fire damage increase flat 300%. Fire damage increase 20% from the Mage Fist gloves. Uh, damage reduction coming at 96.72%. Uh, all resistances are going to be at 89.99%, which is nice. Uh, moving down to the life uh, with no Paragon, 2,832. Not bad. 450% total life bonus, 160,000 life per second, life per kill, 52,000, which is not bad at all, life per hit, 159,000, and life from gold, uh, globe healing bonus, 115,000, which is just great because a lot of times globes will drop, so that's really, really good to have a big number on there. Bonus to gold slash globe radius, 70 yards, and uh, hatred cost reduction, 96 point. 41 it needs a little bit more work so we can get it to 99 but it is still good don't fret it's still really really good 55 percent movement speed bonus and 8,000 experience per kill so yeah man this set is very very potent it's very deadly and it has some really quick clear speeds coming in like right at like i would say a minute to uh a minute and a half not. usually yeah. is like the standard uh risk time that i've been getting but uh, that doesn't mean that you guys uh, can't get anything higher than that. It's just uh, that's like what I did on my on my testing run. But yeah, so this is very very fun though.
it's very mobile. You have three different options for mobility. You can choose to help. stick to your shadow power and smoke screen, which is just uh, your square, is how you activate both of those. So we have Liana's wings and the cube. Or you can choose to uh, vault around and press circle. You can vault and use your circle ability, and that will just immediately kill like everything on screen, which is just insane. So that's kind of a fun way to play. But I think the more fun way is just using the shadow power and going around and rapid firing everything. Now, you can still use your time. vault if you want, you know, to get around quickly. Uh, the cooldown is pretty good, you know, so you'll be able to kind of spam it. Uh, now, mind you, it can't get down lower than 0.5 seconds, so no matter how much cooldown reduction I put on there, you're always going to have to wait that at least 0.5 seconds before casting another spell. So, like, it, it really, yeah, it still makes a big difference, so don't get me wrong. Cooldown reduction still and uh, resource cost reduction do make big, big differences, so that's why we like when the numbers are so high. But yeah, whichever way you decide to play this, though, I think you're going to have fun with it, man. It is a very, very different Demon Hunter. Like, really different from the normal Demon Hunter that I play, which is usually the Gears of the Dreadland outcast, um, and that is kind of the, you know, instantly killing everything. Now, this thing still insta-kills. It's still insta-kills. It's just, uh, you, you gotta put a little bit more work into it, you know what I mean? But it's still great though. Like, it's a lot of fun to play it, and I really think you guys are going to enjoy it. My pack is and full. it is available Mommy, in Jack, hardcore and softcore at the time of recording this video, which it is currently June 6, 2022. So finally, I'd like to thank each and every single one of you guys for watching, man. I think you guys are really going to enjoy these uh, builds that I'm going to be coming out with here in the next couple of days. I've kind of uh, decided to spend a little bit more time in the editor with each set so that way when I make a release I can you know make sure it only needs like minor improvements. I want to make each set release as about damn as good as I can get without having any feedback and then you know what I get from feedback from you guys in the discord is just going to make it better. So if you guys are looking for any of the gear shown in this video. All you need to do is join the Discord. It's linked in the description of this video. It's absolutely free to join. It doesn't cost anything. You don't have to be a subscriber of the channel or nothing like that. But if you do enjoy my content and you feel like you know you want to see more of it, maybe hit that subscribe button because that really, really helps me out when you do. So thank you all for watching. I hope to catch you all in a future video coming out soon. Stay safe. Stay happy. Stay gaming. Peace.